Hello and welcome to this video on laws of indices. Now let's just suppose we had x squared times x cubed and we wanted to simplify that. Well let's consider what these things mean. x squared means x times x, doesn't it? And you're timesing by x cubed which means x times x times x. Now, how many x's are we multiplying together? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we get x to the power of 5. So it seems that when we multiply two things together and we have the same base, we call this the power and we call this the base, the number at the bottom. If we have the same base, we end up adding the power. So in general, if we had x to the power of a and we times by x to the power of b, we would get x to the power of, well, we added the power, so a plus b. So that's our first law of indices. Let's consider what happened if we did x squared all to the power of 3. So we say that we're raising this power to a power. We've got a power to a power. Now let's write this out explicitly. x squared cubed means x squared times x squared times x squared. Do you remember when we cube something, it means you times it by itself and by itself again. Now we know from above that if we times these together, you can add the powers. So it would be x to the power of 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6. And can you see that 2 times 3 would give you 6? That gives us our second law of indices, which is if you have a power and you raise it to another power, you can multiply those numbers together. So 2 times 3 is 6. So we get x to the power of ab. And make sure you understand the difference between the two. Here we're multiplying these two powers together, in which case you add the powers, the indices. And here we're raising a power to another power, and in that case you multiply the indices together. If we had x to the power of 1, that means that you're times it 1x by itself, so you just have x. And finally, if you have x to the power of 0, you would actually get 1. Any number or any expression to the power of zero is equal to one. There's one exception to that, but I won't go into detail there. So how do we prove that? Well, lots of different ways. If I had, say, two cubed, I would know that's equal to, well, eight, because two times two times two is eight. If I had two squared, that's equal to four. If I had two to the power of one, that's equal to two. And can you see, each time I reduce the power by one, I'm dividing by two. So I'm dividing by two again. So if I divide by 2 again, I get 1, don't I? But if I reduce this power by 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, it must be, therefore, that 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Now, that confuses some people because you think, well, you're multiplying 0, 2s by itself. But to be honest, as soon as this power is not a positive integer, you, we can't think of powers anymore as how many times we're multiplying the number together. You can also have negative powers, and you can also have fractional powers, but we'll explore that in another video. Now, there's one further law of indices. Let's just say we wanted to simplify x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 2. Now, if we write out these things explicitly, x to the power of 5 means x times x times x times x times x, and x squared means x times x. Now, if you think about it, if we have these five x's multiplied together, when we divide by one of the x's, that makes one of the x's cancel. And then if we divide top and bottom by a further x, that gets rid of another x. So all we're left with is x cubed, because by dividing by x and x, that got rid of that x and x. They cancelled out. So we are left with x cubed. And you can see, therefore, that we've subtracted these powers. 5 minus 2 is 3, so that gives us our last sort of indices we're going to explore in this video, which is if you have x to the power of a and you divide by x to the power of b, you get x to the power of a minus b. And these are the laws that we explore in this video. When we times these power expressions together, we add the indices, add the powers. When we have a power expression to a power, then you multiply these powers together. x power of 1 is itself, x power of 0, or anything to the power of 0 is 1. And then finally, if you divide power expressions, then you subtract the two powers. So let's use that to solve these questions here. We want to first simplify x to the 5 times x squared. Well, remember our first law of indices, if we're multiplying two power expressions, we just add the powers. By the way, I'm using power expression to refer to the whole expression. 
But this little number here, I'm referring to as the power. So that whole thing is about expression, that is the power. What about B? We've got a power expression to another power. So remember, if that's the case, we multiply the powers together, so we get x to the power of 10. What about C? We've got x to the 10 divided by x to the 2. Well, we're dividing these, we subtract the powers, it's going to be x to the 8. What about D? We have x to the 7 divided by x to the minus 1, so we again subtract the powers, and just be very careful, we're doing 7, and we're subtracting negative 1. 7 minus negative 1 is 7 plus 1. Remember, when you subtract a negative, you add, so that's going to be x to the power of 8. And what about E? We've got x to the 7 divided by x. Well, if we just have x on its own, we could write that as x to the power of 1. And that means we can now subtract these powers to get x to the power of 6. What about this second one? We've got y to the 4 times y to the 5 all over y squared, squared times by y. Now let's simplify it a bit at a time. The numerator, we're multiplying two power expressions, so we add the powers, that's y to the 9 over y squared all squared times y. Now, y to the 9 divided by y squared, we subtract the powers, it's y to the 7, so it's y to the 7 all squared times by, and y we could write as y to the 1. And then remember, when we have a power expression to another power, we multiply these together, so it's y to the 14 times y to the 1, so we add those to get y to the 15. What about 3? We want to write 5 to the 7 cubed times 5 squared as a single power of 5. So, let's simplify this first. We've got a power expression to a power, we multiply the powers, so it's 5 to the 21 times 5 squared. And then we're multiplying two power expressions, so we add the powers to get 5 to the power of 23. And finally, we've got these things here, so we've got 3x to the 4 squared. Now remember that when you square something, it means you times it by itself, so it's 3x to the 4 times by 3x to the 4. Now everything's being multiplied together here, 3 times 3 is 9, but then x to the 4 times x to the 4, we know we add the powers, so it's going to be x to the power of 8. And that's slightly confusing because you're multiplying the 3s, but you're adding the 4, so just be careful about that. And the second one, we've got 5x to the 6y cubed. Now when we cube it, we could write this times itself times itself, or just note that when you have a single term to a power, you can do each thing within that term to that power. So we've got 5 cubed, 5 cubed you might know is 1, 2, 5, 5 times 5 times 5. Now x to the 6 to the 3, so imagine the other things aren't there. We've got x to the 6 to the power 3. Well, we know that we multiply the powers together, so we get x to the 18. And then finally we've got y cubed. Be careful though, because if I have ab squared, then you apply that power to each of these things, so it'd be a squared, b squared, so that works. But if I had a plus b squared, you might think that's a squared plus b squared. We can apply the square to each things in the sum, but that is not true. So basically, if these things are being times together, yes, you can apply that power to each of the things. But if they're being added together, then no, you can't just square each of the things. Remember, you just write that bracket out twice. You do a plus b times a plus b, and then you just expand the brackets. And if you did that, that would simplify to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So we get this additional term in the middle. So just be careful about that.